Today's video, I'm going to plaster a room in one day, but the main purpose of this video is because I'm going to be using Blue Grit, and I traditionally hate that product, but I'm going to see if it's actually worth using, and I actually found this video, I was pleasantly surprised, so let's go straight into it now. Okay, so here it is, we've got the Blue Grit on board, ready to go, and uh, yeah, the first thing is applying it, it's, it's not easy stuff to apply, it's very thick, which is probably what makes it a good product for other people, but... Uh, you've got to do it the day before and then wait 24 hours for it to dry completely. Uh, PVA, you can whack it on, plaster it the same day. Blue grit does take a while to dry, so that's the first issue. That's always been one of the main issues as well. So I like to get in a room uh, and then skim it the same day. I don't like to prep the day before. Uh, so yeah, this is it one day later. And yeah, it's solid to the wall there. And must admit, when it has dried, you've got a proper grip, proper key. Um, so the first part of the room was basically plasterboard. So it's a plasterboard ceiling, plasterboard wall. And a little bit of blue grit section on the left there. Um, so you've got a tiny like 400 millimetre width patch there. And we'll go into that in a minute. But yeah, the first section of the room was like I said, plasterboard. So easy enough, nothing really to contend with. Just uh, applying the plaster in nice upward motions but then there was a bad luck omen and I swear down this was an early sign that blue grit's not made for me I turn around after the first coat and I can see this bubbling appearing and um, I knew straight away that the blue grit's sliding off and to be fair it wasn't the product's fault there was some flaking paint now I wouldn't have known this no one would have known this until you would have blue gritted or PVA'd it but this just highlights some of the problems that I have when it comes to blue grit and I'm going to discuss it now. Now this is probably the worst problem I have with blue grit is the fact that most plasters think you can just get over all issues. So if you've got a bit of crumbling plaster, blue grit it. If it's a bit of flaking paint, blue grit it. This is where I think the big fault is plasterers are using it to cover all scenarios and thinking it's the be all and end all. The problem is if you've got a damaged background, if your plaster's cracking, if, if it's drummy, it needs to come off and you need to start again. That's the correct way to do it. So my biggest thing is that plasterers treat it like it's a magic cure and if you can go over any trouble background, even says that in a tub, you can then plaster it. But it's not true. If there's any issues, you need to deal with it straight away. Flaking paint wasn't a blue grit's problem, but it just highlights where the issues can be. Now, the only option I really have now is just to mix and start again, really. That's literally all you can do. So I've mixed up a new batch. I've taken off the, uh, the flaking sections of the blue grit and just applied some fresh plaster to it. And then, you know, you just got to carry on. So applied the second coat directly onto it and then started again. But it's just early signs for me that <laughs> there is drawbacks back to blue grit. But again, I can't blame the product. That is basically the state of the walls, flaking paint that um, wasn't evidently clear before. Um, so I'm just applying a second coat, again upward motions, and just getting the first half of the room done. Like I say, it's plasterboard, so it's easy enough. Apply the plaster, and then flatten with a speed skim. Um, and I must admit, there was nothing. After the second coat was applied, and I flattened it in, and I've taken away the sections where the blue grit has um, peeled back, the rest of that area was perfect. I'm just casually dunking a croissant, by the way. <laughs> croissant and cup of tea, can't beat it. So I've applied a second coat, flattened it with the trowel, now I'm cross troweling um, just to get the flat walls in. But basically all we're doing now is just flattening the areas and getting it done. And like I say, just getting the first section of the room done, finally finishing with a wet trowel. I do a dry trowel after that, but again this isn't really about doing the, showing the uh, process of plastering. I just wanted to show you the first half of the room, like I said, and comparing this to blue grit, this is a, a decent case study. Um, the plasterboard went off relatively fast but now it's time to plaster the rooms and the walls with the blue grit. So my mates in the other room plastering the little bathroom so we've got the big boy tub out. It's a 75 litres, we've got three bags in that. Um, and this is where you need a lot of plaster. When you are plastering onto blue grit you need a big amount because it eats plaster. The first thing you'll notice when plastering with blue grit is you'll get through it rapid because because it's such a coarse texture on the walls you end up using a lot more and um, you do have to put it on thick to get over the sections where the blue grit is quite coarse so in itself you are using a lot more plaster than you are as if it was a plasterboard wall like I'd say to the point your first coat 
you, I'd say you're using an extra third amount. So if you say if you've got one wall and it took one bag um, of plasterboard, I'd say it take one and a third with blue grit. It really does eat it up, and you will notice it. You'll just see the mix disappear. <laughs> it does just go. And look, if you look at the texture now, it is quite gritty, quite pitted, because. You know, I know it doesn't look deep, but that extra one, two million areas is quite a lot to get over with a plaster. So, um, especially if you've got a big build up, like a cluster of the blue grit, you really do have to put it on thick. But you know, the first coat, it was not the most enjoyable process to apply when you are applying onto blue grit. So that's the, again, a bit of another drawback. So when you're applying the first coat, it's gritty, it's quite coarse. Um, and you will notice that it, it does take a lot more plaster, which ultimately means more money. You know, if you've got 100 bags and you're using an extra third, it's a quite a lot of money in it for a job. So, flattening in, it wasn't actually a problem for the first coat flattening with a speed skim. My biggest issue is I thought the suction was going to go really harsh with the blue grit. I don't know why I had that misconception, but I assumed the suction was, I thought it was going to dry out properly. And the thing we've got to pay attention here, and I've got to give credit to, we've got areas that have got bonding, existing paint, um, we've got areas where we've got thicker, thicker sections. Is It's not perfectly flat wall, I must admit it was actually quite, quite uneven. So this is actually a tough black background to be plastering onto here. Um, so for the blue grit it's quite a tough little challenge for it so perfect to really test it out so I've got the rest of the room on um, that's the three walls the only thing I did left, leave was one reveal but that's the rest of the room done and it does hang well I'm not gonna lie it did stay quite tacky and it was still quite wet now immediately I flattened with a speed skim like I said but now I'm applying the second coat and this is where it got better the second coat was a lot easier to apply the first coat hadn't dried out, it still had a lot of play to it. So I must admit, this is when I started to get quite surprised of it. When I was applying the second coat, it was actually really nice to apply the second coat onto the first. Again, I was pleasantly surprised because it was a lot easier to work with than what I thought. So here's what I had to say about that. I've got both coats on, it's been flattened. And I'll be honest, it's actually holding up quite well. Still soft, still nice to work with. I'm quite surprised actually, I thought it was gonna go off rapid, but. Let me show you. So even at this point, we've still got a lot of play. Don't need any water. It's actually flattening in nicely, which again, it's quite surprised about. So yeah, so far, pretty good. So yeah, that's the flattening process. And again, it really does take up well. I was pleasantly surprised from this point onwards how nice it was to work with the plaster on top of the blue grit. Yeah, it does use a lot more plaster, but in terms of suction control, it was brilliant. There was literally, it's not pulling in, like sometimes with PVA, if you're working on mixed backgrounds, it can, it will affect it if you're working on bonding, existing plaster and then hard wall. I was really impressed how well a suction was controlled with blue grit. And in the end, ultimately, how, how the finish came out, you know, I was very happy with it. Now, this is a bit of a sideline, but one of my mates who's a chippy, um, he wanted to be involved in this video, so here's exactly what happened here. My life goal is to see the background on me, just walk past. You can do it now. Go with it. Show your shirt. Just stand in it. <laughs> yeah, just like, oh, <laughs> Bad times. <laughs> there we go, made a man's dream come true. <laughs> the colourful, chippy James and his wonderful shirt strikes again. And that's the room done. So, you know what? I was pleasantly surprised using Blue Grit. It was a nice product to use. And compared to my misconceptions, I must admit, I've been converted with this product. So yeah, that's the third it. So as you can see, I'm actually pleasantly surprised this time around on Blue Grit. It's not, I'm not fully convinced. I still love PVA, to be honest, but it's very nice to work with. And the second time around in using this product, it was nice and getting a good finish and the suction was controlled very well. So that is it. That's the end of today's video. Leave a comment and see what you think about Blue Grit. If you want to see why I plastered a room in one hit rather than one day, 
click this video here um, and I'll go show you through the full process where I frantically plastered a room in a hit like I say and if you like this video subscribe here thanks a lot cheers